Hi guys, so as a medical student, you will often observe an imbalance of your blood pressure due to stress from exams, sleepless nights for study, or empty stomach test preparation. So don't you ever wonder how these small acts are affecting your BP and how BP gets back to its normal range after that? This certainly cannot happen due to a single reason, right? Let me tell you how this works. First, let's look at the equation for blood pressure. Well, the blood pressure is equal to the cardiac output into the total peripheral resistance. And our cardiac output means the heart rate into strokes volume. So now all the regulation of BP will come down to this particular equation. So the question of the day is, how is blood pressure regulated? The blood pressure inside of our body is controlled by four major mechanisms. Nervous mechanism, renal mechanism, hormonal mechanism, and the last one is local mechanism. Well, in the nervous mechanism, BP is regulated through baroreceptors and chemoreceptors. If we talk about baroreceptors, they are inside the carotid sinus and arthritic arc. So what happens is that once there is an imbalance, say, increase in BP, these baroreceptors start to work faster, giving signals to increase efferent impulses towards the cardiovascular center. And then these impulses increase the parasympathetic nervous system activity and decrease sympathetic nervous system activity. Well, after that, parasympathetic nervous system, due to its increased activity, will reduce the cardiac output and cause vasodilation to reduce the blood pressure. Now, similar mechanism occurs when the blood pressure decreases, but all these factors will be reversed. Well, if we talk about the chemoreceptor mechanisms, then it, is can, then it can be stimulated by three things. The first one is lack of oxygen. The second one is excess of carbon dioxide. And the third one is low levels of pH in blood. Well, their detailed mechanism is a topic for another day. Let's move on towards the renal mechanism. In renal mechanism, juxtaglomerular apparatus is a major component to regulate BP. Whenever there is an increase in BP, juxtaglomerular apparatus will excrete large number of salts and water from the kidney. This will reduce ECF, that is extracellular fluid, from blood, leading to a decreased BP. In case of the decreased BP, renin present in the adrenal cortex will be triggered to produce angiotensinogen that will activate RAAS, that is renin angiotensin activating system, and that will cause renal retention of salts and water in blood. Well, this will cause vasoconstriction and an increase in the BP. In case of kidney disease, this mechanism will be disturbed, leading to hypertensive crisis. Well, the third mechanism we have is hormonal mechanism, and it can be regulated by two types of hormones. The first one are that increase arterial blood pressure. Well, these are namely adrenaline, noradrenaline, thyroxine, aldosterone, vasopressin, angiotensin, and serotonin. And the second ones are that that will particularly decrease the main arterial pressure that are vasoactive interstitial polypeptides, bradykinin, prostaglandins, histamines, acetylcholine, natriuretic peptides, for example, atrial, brain, and C-type natriuretic peptides. Well, all of them have different mechanisms, so we will be discussing this further in other lectures. And the last one is the local mechanism. Local mechanism is also followed by two things local vasoconstrictors and local vasodilators. Well, the local vasoconstrictors are derived from EDCF, means endothelium derived constricting factors. That means they will be derived from endothelium, of course. They are further divided into three types, ET1, ET2, and ET3. All of them are subjected to vasoconstriction that is going to increase RPB. Well, the local vasodilators is followed by two factors. The first one is due to metabolic products. For example, carbon dioxide, lactate, carbon and hydrogen. 
and the second mechanism is of course like EDRF, endothelium-derived relaxing factors, in which only one endothelin is identified as nitric oxide. Both of these mechanisms will cause vasodilatation that will decrease the BP. So now you know that how BP is regulated inside the body briefly. So that was all. If you want to dig deeper into these mechanisms, then you might as well subscribe to scadia.com and watch all medical related videos for a better understanding of medicine and surgery. So why wait? Log on today. So that was all for today. Remember, we upload full lectures every week. But for more content, you can visit our website, scadia.com. We have exciting new lectures waiting for you. So go visit and happy learning.